First the Pac-Man eats through a maze of dots, then the Pac-Man heads for the corner spot. Pac-Man was pretty much the king of video games. Well, before Mario took the title from him, but still you can't deny that the original Pac-Man arcade game is still one of the most influential video games of all time. And just like most other influential video games, over the years people are going to try and make it playable on every single machine produced by mankind. I mean, just go ask Tetris or Doom. Nowadays, Pac-Man is a very accessible game. You can play a bajillion third-party versions of it online, pay for the premium arcade or home console ports, or just get an official free-to-play version on your smartphone. In late 2017, however, a company called Super Impulse released a line of tiny functional arcade game cabinets, including one for Pac-Man. I came across them alongside ones for Galaxian in the toy store the other day, and being the kind of person that Impulse buys everything, being the kind of person that often gets curious about novelty items, I had to get one of them and check it out to see if it really offers a decent experience, or it's just a gimmick that works out within a few minutes. So here it is, the Pac-Man Tiny Arcade. Right off the bat, the package comes with the unit itself, an instruction booklet, and free AAA batteries pre-installed, which should offer a decent amount of battery life. Not a big fan of how you have to use a screwdriver to open the battery compartment, but I guess it's harder to lose than a clip-on battery cover. And uh, yeah, this thing is pretty tiny, measuring at less than 4x2x2 inches, with a screen that's roughly 1.5 inch across. Here's the right Joy-Con for scale. The build quality is actually pretty sturdy, with a form factor and artwork that's pretty faithful to the original arcade machine from the photos I've seen of it, minus the Midway branding. The same cannot be said for the controls though, which feature something that, uh, resembles a joystick. The buttons are very clicky, and I'm not sure if the quote-unquote joystick even registers more than four directions. For Pac-Man, I suppose it's passable, though I can't imagine playing a shooter like Galaxian with this sort of control. Alright, enough talk, let's just boot up the game with the power switch on the back. Well, it's Pac-Man, alright. The banner on the top even lights up, nice attention to detail. Sadly, the start screen is nearly unreadable due to the anti-aliasing on the text, which is a bit of a shame, it's like someone just downsized a screenshot from the arcade game in Photoshop. I think using a slightly different but readable font would have been a better compromise. The button on the left starts the game while the run on the right does nothing. Cool. As for the game itself... It's Pac-Man! Pretty self-explanatory, eat all the pellets in the maze while avoiding the ghosts. It's not a one-to-one -one port of the arcade original obviously, but it's still a really faithful reproduction given the limits of the small screen. If you wanted a similar experience back in the 90s, you were stuck with a cruddy LCD game. Even though the game doesn't run nearly as smooth as its arcade counterpart, it is still perfectly playable. As for downgrades to the actual game itself, obviously there is no two-player mode present and the high score data is lost once the unit is turned off, but overall no major loss here. The LED screen itself, while not at a really high resolution, still shows things pretty sharply aside from the sprites and text having anti-aliasing. For reference, each pellet takes up exactly one pixel. Just for fun, I compared the tiny arcade to the other way I know of for playing Pac-Man on a small screen, playing the GBA port for the Pac-Man collection on the Game Boy Micro. And uh, yeah, the size of the maze on both screens are nearly identical. However, the screen brightness is fixed and cannot be changed. And the same goes for the volume of the speakers on the bottom as well. You can't change it or even turn it off, which is the biggest wasted opportunity here to me. Having a mute option on a unit would have made it a much more feasible idea to play it in public, which is seemingly what the keychain at the back suggests you use it for. This is probably the biggest downside of this unit in my opinion. Despite all of these minor inconveniences though, at the end, it's still a tiny little Pac-Man arcade cabinet that features a perfectly playable reproduction of the game, and I think that alone is still worth the 20 US dollar price of admission. There is definitely room for improvement, but you could also do much worse. I can see myself firing it up every once in a while, plus it just looks pretty damn cool on its own. Sure, if you're looking for a place to play Pac-Man for the first time, this probably isn't the best solution. But if you're a fan of Pac-Man, or heck, just a fan of video games in general, I do think that this serves as a great novelty item to collect, or give to someone as a gift. So yeah, do check it out if you come across one. Now where's my Riven Tengoku Mini Arcade Nintendo? I'll buy 20!